All right. Um, you might have been interested in um, applying additive synthesis to uh, a kind of polyphonic um, model or engine, um, which is very much possible. The problem is that um, you need to, in that case, be able to, if you remember back to the, uh, the engine that we built for the additive synthesis patch a few weeks ago, you'll need to check that out um, if, you're, if you don't remember. Uh, it, it's, it's basically this. And the, uh, if you imagine that this is a K slider with note information and velocity information coming out of there, then this is basically the patch. So it goes, the note information goes into a uh, MIDI to frequency object, gets converted to a frequency. Um, that dictates the cycle, uh, the, so the frequency of the cycle object, and of course these, uh, the multiplied by two, multiplied by three, give us the, um, the second and third harmonics. Those are dictating the uh, frequencies of these other two sine wave oscillators. And then at the same time, or immediately afterwards in this case, we have a bang being sent to, or a, a, a the um, frequency converted to a bang by virtue of the button object, triggering these uh, envelope or the function, breakpoint function editors, um, which in turn are controlling line. So we have an envelope for each of the three uh, harmonics, and that is being used to drive, well, that is, that's all running into a, a second, um, well, it's not a second because there are three here, but the, an, another kind of layer of um, control of volume, which is the velocity control. So that's being divided by uh, 127. You could, of course, add an ADSR envelope uh, under here if you wanted to. And if you manage to do that, then good for you. That will be more points. Um, and then, of course, this would go out to the... Uh, the sound output. So the the model here is exactly the same, but we would need to be able to control the envelopes within these abstractions or these sub patches. Uh, well, actually, they're sub patches in this case, um, which is not necessarily altogether easy to do. So I've given a um, I've given a uh, the the means of doing so here. So you can have a look at this. Try and figure it out, out how it works. Um, it's a bit of a trick, but you will notice that it enables me to change any of these and the uh, whatever's going on envelope-wise in the sub-patches is also changed. Um, and what's happening is that when I change the, uh, the envelopes in the main part of the patch, the, um, I'm sending... What am I sending? Hang on. Yeah, OK. So the first thing that happens from the right-hand side is a bang is sent as soon as I change the function object with the mouse. It goes into a trigger object, and the first thing that does is to send a clear message to the envelope. So env1, it sends this clear message. Remember, the trigger object helps us with right-to-left order of events. So it sends a clear message t through this send env1 uh, object to the receive env1. Of course, that's going into all of these uh, function voice um, sub-patches. And clears it, although you don't see it, because um, it immediately afterwards sends a bang message to this dump uh, command, which dumps the information from the function object out of this uh, third in outlet, where it says, as you see, dump message output as a list, into the um, send again and um, updates the uh, function, the, the function object in all of the sub patches. And of course, that's happening for the, 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 the routine is identical for all three of those. Um, <clears throat> so, as I say, that clear and the redrawing is instantaneous, so you don't see the clear, you just see the redraw. Um, so that's one way of doing it, and, and that's, you know, that's enabled me to have uh, additive synthesis as part of my um, 
sub patch and of course then you can add the various oscillators uh, to replace the cycle objects here just as you did in the previous patches you could add as I say the ADSR envelope and so on. So that's one way of doing it. Um, remember because I, I didn't in the um, I think I've provided this patch as a as an example on the website if I haven't I shall do so shortly. Um, the I, what I've done I think on there is to by default have the oops sorry Oh no, I'm going to reopen the patch then. Uh, so function later. There we go. Um, what I've done here is to have the envelopes go to zero at their ends, which is not ideal because then the sound stops before I've released the key, bearing in mind that this is polyphonic. So it stops, you notice. Which makes releasing the key a bit pointless. So what I what you might want to do is just to leave the ends open a little bit so that the the sounds continue beyond the end of the envelope. And then of course when you release the key it will stop. But you still get a useful kind of evolve, evolving of the tone uh, in the first part of that note. Anyway, so that's that. Um, the other possibility is uh, we've looked at the presets before uh, in just a, a couple of tutorials ago, uh, in fact probably the last one. Um, and here, if I go into there, we've got the same kind of idea with uh, th the three function objects and the three parts of our additive synth engine. Um, it's just that this time <coughs> um, uh, I'm controlling them using presets. So I've obviously put in uh, various preset types into there, as you can see, on my six presets. Um, and those presets are stored within the sub-patches, uh, so you can access them by means of sending a umenu uh, command, just as I did in the last um, exercise, via this plus one, because remember that the presets start at zero, they're the indices for the um, items within there. That will be 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. But the presets start at 1. Again, I don't know why, but they do. Um, so if I... That's, sorry, it's a bit difficult to see. Oops. But you will see that as I ch choose different presets here, they're all being updated down below. So, and obviously you'd probably call your presets something more useful than preset X. <laughs> You get the idea. Okay, um, so saving function data. Um, that, that's hopefully a useful thing to, to, to know and to have access to.